Welcome to Bad Idea Metals. I'm Anthony, and today we are going to take apart an Xbox 360 and a PlayStation 3, the original thick body uh, model, the original one. These were both given to the channel for this purpose. So um, they're pretty beat up. They're missing stuff like the faceplate on this one. Um, I don't think there's anything specifically missing on this one other than it's just dirty. Um, it probably sat in somebody's garage for a long time. So we're gonna do these one at a time and we're gonna see what's inside and I'm gonna explain what scrap I see. And so here we go. Which one should we start with? This one's already in a good spot. So why don't we start with that one? It does as those screws were into the plastic uh, mounting points on the other side. So there you go. That was, that was pretty fun. Lucky guess. I don't always get that, that lucky when it comes to my guessing. So we got a standard DVD player. This is a DVD ROM. Um, uh, we've got a number of cables here, SATA cable, and it looks like a power ribbon. And here we go. So in here, we've got the CPU is going to be underneath this heat sink, this, this cooler. And then um, the graphics GPU chipset should be right underneath this heat sink as well. Um, I see some RAM here. That's probably for the GPU. I see some RAM here. Not sure what that's for, but in general, um, that's what I'm seeing. Um, as Xboxes are a, a computer of sorts, I was hoping to see more RAM in here, and there might be. Um, we'll see if we can look at the bottom of the board on the other side there. We've got some case fans and all the ports, but uh, I'm not seeing any screws. That's probably what these, uh, these little um, yellowish, greenish screws are, are for, is to help hold the board down from the other side. But... That's what I'm seeing. Let's go ahead and take those out and see if it indeed drops the board. Well, I didn't hear the board fall, so I'm half expecting it to still be connected, which it is. Hmm. Uh -huh. And now it just wants to come right out. So there's a double fan. It's pretty cool. But now the board just wants to come up. That's all it was taken was wedged in place by the fan. Okay, well, here's our Xbox chassis, the metal interior frame. Let's take a look at the bottom here. So we do indeed see more, more RAM. This is in the spot where the video is located. I bent that pretty bad. Okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and liberate these. Okay, we do indeed have four uh, chips of, or IC chips of RAM on one side and four on the other. So our GPU has got eight chips total. I don't see any specific RAM for the system itself, which is interesting. Um, I don't I don't know if it's if it's shared. Maybe the RAM is shared between the CPU and the GPU, and that's fine. Um, an integrated chipset it's allowed to do that, but uh, um, having it on the same bus potentially slows the fastest one down, but uh, you can only go as fast as your slowest bus speed. But irrelevant, I really don't know how this is designed, and hey, they're a very successful billion dollar company and I'm not, so. Um, this over here looks like the Southbridge chipset architecture uh, for, for older systems, similar to like, core two duos and things like that. Um, 
I'm gonna have to look up and remind myself when the Xbox 360 came out. But I have a feeling that this is about the same age as a Core 2 system, which roughly is uh, 2008, 2010, um, or, or older probably actually, maybe about 2007. Um, but yeah, what I'm interested in scrap-wise here, uh, the eight IC chips associated to the RAM for the, for the graphics, uh, this BGA right here, and then this little Hynix chipset right here. This is technically RAM, but uh, it's, it's just a single chipset for it. Uh, on here, there's a few gold pinned um, pieces. You'll find gold pins, also the gold plated pins in your network port. It looks like right here in your power. Uh, there's also some, uh, you'll pretty much all of these ports are gonna have some gold plating. Some are much better than others, but there you go. Um, these copper components have such little copper. I may pop them off just just to add to my collection of copper. And then there's some MLCCs just wandering around in different places on the board. Um, but that's really it. Um, and of course, I've got the heat sinks. Yeah, there's a lot more copper on this heat sink than I was expecting. And this one is pure aluminum. There is no, uh, sorry about that. There's no joint compound uh, fusing two different components like a copper to aluminum or aluminum to stainless steel. So this, uh, this is going to go in my forge. We'll save that one for myself. But nice, a nice copper mixed with aluminum or stainless. This bracket here is, is ferrous. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a, an iron steel uh, bracket mount. We could take these off if we want to increase its value. Um, or locally for me, uh, copper and aluminum radiators typically sell about a dollar to a dollar fifty per pound. Um, definitely higher if it has nothing ferrous on it. So if I take that off, it'll increase the value about fifty cents per pound. So we'll save that. All right, let's clean up this mess and let's move on to the PlayStation Three. And here is our PlayStation Three. Um, nothing really to explain about this one other than. It's time it dies and gets taken apart, like the Xbox before it. I'm curious if the year is on here, because the PS3, I think, competed against the uh, Xbox 360. Reading upside down, I'm not seeing a year. It's probably on here, and I'm probably just not reading it because it's upside down. Found it. December 2007. So if this indeed is the same age as the Xbox 360, and I said that that looks like a Core 2 architecture. Um, that is about 2007. So, so far my guesses are panning out. It's looking pretty accurate. Um, let's go ahead and see if this is gonna match, in general, the architecture of the Xbox. There we go. Oh, that's dusty. But in here, we have a, uh, a cover on whatever this is. We also have our optical drive right here, which should be a Blu-ray player. I think this was the first system that a Blu-ray player came on. So that'll be a Blu-ray player. This one's screwed down. It's got some power specs, input and output with uh, with all the different power recommendations. Plus it's got these nice pins. So yes, this indeed looks to be the power supply. Well, where should we go next? Um, it looks like the hard drive bay was right here. And the designers made it so that you should be able to add and remove hard drives pretty fast. That's very friendly. Um, let's take that bracket off as it no longer serves a function. And uh, we're probably gonna have to take it off anyway to get to the, to the main board. Come on. There we go. 
All right, what should we get next? There's a um, fun little ribbon right there. I think my cat just got bullied by a bird. He came running back over here. His tail between his legs. Now he's sitting between my feet. All right, protect you from the mean, scary birds, but you kind of need to grow up. Take care of yourself a little bit better. All right. Just piece of metal. Is this the wireless? It's got an antenna input right there. This looks to be like a wireless card. It's got a stick of RAM on it, or I mean, a, a, an IC of RAM. And then I'm not sure what Marvell is, but the brand Marvell. Anyway. It's got, it's got a few components on here that I'm interested in. I'm curious what's underneath this. It's got a few more BGAs. So this has got a little bit of gold recovery value to me. Not a lot. Um, this is probably about uh, a penny or two, maybe more than that. I can't remember exactly how much DDR1 style uh, um, IC chips are. Um, I'm doing a process for him this year. Uh, we're gonna see, we'll, we'll get the math done probably by the end of the summer. But the other BGAs on the board, well, I'm not getting into there right now. The other BGAs, not worth a lot, but maybe quarter, 50 cent, I don't know. That's really all that's on the board. It's got a few gold-plated pins in here for USB. As it's damaged, it's not worth anything. Plus I'm sure every Every PlayStation has one of those. Some gold plating down inside the, the antenna connector there. Put all of our wires in here, keep track of those. Okay, now it looks like it's time to get underneath the, uh, the metal here. I'm looking at these chips right here to see if there's any gold fingers that come off the edge. Sometimes they, they kind of crawl over the edge um, on some of those types of chips, which are pretty fun. And there's gold plating on, the, on those two prongs. But going back to these chips, sometimes they have gold just hiding right underneath the surface, but I don't see that on these. All right. Well, it's hard to tell which one's the CPU and which one's the, the GPU without uh, without pulling some of this um, thermal paste off. So let's go ahead and do that. Sony Computer Entertainment Reality Synthesizer. So that must be our GPU, the, the cores for that. Oh, come on. Man, this thermal paste is on there good. Means it got pretty hot baked it let's see this one says there we go sony computer entertainment cell be broadband engine it could be that that's the cpu that's a gpu i'd have to look it up like i said at the very beginning i don't know what is what in here but i can at least tell you what i'm interested in for scrap purpose, um, these four BGAs here, these two BGAs there, this gold-plated prong set, uh, it doesn't look very thickly plated, but it, it does have a really nice gold color to it. So it's there. On this back piece, there's a few surface mount things that I'm interested in. There's a few tantalum capacitors, a whole bunch of really small MLCCs but in general, I'll scrape them off. They're interesting. This side's got the best value to me though. Right here, this BGA is really, really good for me. I'm thinking that one's probably about 25 cent, 50 cent. Um, it's got two more of these, as we saw on the back, as well as all four of these, which we saw on the back. I actually don't know if there's gonna be any gold in them. They don't look like the standard carbon-based um, IC chips. These are good, this one's good, 
and then these three are questionable and again surface mount stuff there's tantalum capacitors there's a few more there there's all the surface mount stuff that i can scrape off um i'm trying to find their clock there's a little clock right there they're oscillators uh, sometimes they have gold that could be useful but that one's a pretty small clock oh this chip's actually pretty good sometimes this little chip here it's got the two on each side it kind of looks like a capacitor but i don't know the name of it they sometimes have gold just right underneath their their cap but there you go and i don't see a clock on this side either it's probably here and i'm just looking too quickly without thinking but there you go this board's not bad i'd say when it comes down to scrap value this playstation board has more value than the xbox did but that's all right that's not part of the contest is it let's go ahead and pull this up standard steel frame and this is a pretty pretty fun looking uh fan down here let's take this fan out and see more about it it looks to be a pretty standard side spinning squirrel cage motor yep this looks like those uh the 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 water wells the mills that's a pretty cool fan Still blows air pretty nice. Oh, man, I wish I had projects for those. And last but not least, we got our aluminum down here. It looks like I can gain access to them if I pop these four screws. So let's pull those. So I don't know if those are aluminum foils, but they look like they could be. It's a pretty cool looking uh, heat sink though. There's two of them kind of go together. That's interesting. Anyway, okay, well, that's it. That's the bottom of the PlayStation. So let me spread everything out and take a look with you guys at all the things we found. All right, so there's all the little screws and stuff. I don't want that falling out and getting lost on the ground. But here's all the really small steel. I left the uh, two optical drives, the Blu-ray and the DVD player right there, just because that's an easy spot for it. Um, here's a stack of mostly steel. There's a little bit of plastic, but that's attached to the steel. We got our plastics to recycle. And then the more exciting stuff. So here's our power supply. That's got some copper in it. It's hard to see down inside, but We'll do our best. There's some copper right past all that dust. Nah, it's in there somewhere. You can kind of see some right there. But there's our power supply. We've got these two fans, the uh, double fan from the Xbox and the single squirrel cage fan from the PlayStation. We got all the heat sinks. These, uh, these two with the weird warts on them came out of the PlayStation and then this over the GPU of the Xbox and that over the CPU of the Xbox. Then we got our two circuit boards from the PlayStation and from the Xbox. I'll show you those a little bit. I'll give you a, a pretty fun flyover here. There's our Xbox. They dropped the washers down on the ground like I didn't want to do. There's our Xbox. Here's the wireless card. And now it's time for the PlayStation. Here's the main board from the PlayStation. It's pretty fun stuff. Here, maybe I could give you a better angle on those uh, prongs. You can kind of see that there's gold plating in there. Not a lot, but it's there. 
and the back half of the board. And there you go. But that's it. And there's our mess. Time to clean it all up and we can start refining what we have. But that'll do on a different day, probably as part of a different video. So thanks for watching this one. And uh, we're gonna be tearing more stuff apart this year. Some interesting stuff coming up, like a server. Actually, I think I've got three servers and a, a really large power supply, ridiculously large. The power supply is about 300 pounds. Can't even lift it off my trailer. So I'll probably have a, a trailer visit here in just a, a few weeks. Our channel's anniversary is coming up. It's the fourth anniversary of this channel. Can't even believe it's been that long. But thank you to everybody who subscribes and keeps following along. I take requests as long as it doesn't put me or, or my, my operation here in any sort of danger. But I'm happy to, to tear specific things apart or melt specific things into specific shapes. You let me know. Um, I wouldn't mind doing a contest or a giveaway. I talked about swag over Christmas and uh, I got one person who commented back. So I'll, I'll reward them probably for, for, their, for their courage to, to mention swag. But in general, I'm looking for fun things to give away like shirts and stickers, keychains or paperweights. The paperweights I can make for free. I just need to make them. But like the other things, I'm happy to buy a few things and make them available either on the channel or somewhere else. But anyway, let me know. I'm happy to, to ship things to you guys. And thank you for, for being a part of this, this journey as long as I have been. But we'll get to it. Okay, I'm done rambling. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good night.